Welcome back. President Obama meeting with Saudi Arabia's Crown Prince and Deputy Crown Prince at the White House this morning, ahead of the Gulf Leaders Summit tomorrow. The focus of the discussions will be the Iran nuclear agreement as the region's worries grow about Iran's nuclear ambitions. Joining us now is Fox News contributor Jillian Turner. Uh, welcome and thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you. So, of course, the big story coming out of this is the uh, lack of presence from these Arab leaders to begin with. What do you make of that? Um, well, you know, this this whole Camp David uh, event has really become a summit for the BCAST. You know, the crown princes, the, the ministers, rather than foreign heads of state and government. And this is a very clear signal from our Arab allies of their displeasure over the U.S. nuclear negotiations with Iran, as well as U.S. failure to really check Iranian power in the region. And I think more than anything, this is going to be a missed opportunity for the Obama administration because the entire premise for hosting this summit in the first place was to try and establish some regional defense cooperation in the Middle East. So, Jillian, what do you see getting done, if anything, at this summit? Um, well, Iran and Saudi Arabia are longtime regional rivals, and as such, they monitor one another's bilateral relationships with the United States very closely. Um, it's no secret that Saudi's new king, Salman, has been displeased with the direction President Obama is taking this. Um, I think the best way to sum it up was from this great quote I heard coming out of the Carnegie Endowment earlier last week, which is that the United States and Saudi Arabia have been acting like allies but not friends, while the United States and Iran have been lately acting like friends mm. but not allies. And that really captures, you know, the foreign policy community sentiment here in Washington. Obviously, the foreign policy discussion, Jillian, is shaping up to be a big one for 2016 and for those that are the announced candidates so far. How would you characterize the uh, foreign policy decisions and the climate of the current administration as we are today going into for example, the summit. The summit. Mm -hmm. um, well, you know, the foreign policy, I believe, and national security issues are really going to take front and center stage in in this round of elections more than in previous election cycles. That's because we, if you look at the Middle East alone, the United States is actively working with allies there on pushing back, you know, degrading and ultimately destroying ISIS in Iraq and Syria. We're working to help with the conflict in Yemen. We're helping to still at this point, though we don't know how much more of this is going to go on, with Middle East peace, bridging the divide between Israel and the Palestinian territories. I think all the candidates, both sides of the aisle, are going to have to have very clear positions on each of these issues as well as many others if they really hope to make it past the primaries. All right, so Jillian, so you're calling it the B-cast that's actually going to be meeting with the president. <laughs> Well, you know, it's ministers, foreign ministers, interior ministers, yeah. and the crown princes, which is really, you know, the next generation. Yep. So it's the, you know. Rather than heads of state and government, which we would all like, prefer, was, was getting together at the summit. All right, Jillian, thanks exactly. for the update, and we'll keep watching it. Uh, thanks for setting it up for us.